Good morning. So what does the Israelites, the apostles, two old ladies in their eighties and a young family all have in common? Any guesses? They are all loved by God and they all took time to cry out to God and in return saw God move in mighty ways. Um, the Israelites, they cried out in slavery and God heard their cries and came and delivered them out of slavery. The apostles, after Jesus ascended to heaven, um, went to the upper room, returned to the upper room in Jerusalem and devoted themselves to prayer. And it was there that the Holy Spirit descended upon them. Two old ladies in their 80s, crippled, one blind, the other one bent over, over with arthritis, couldn't homebound and did, saw their parish um, in the Hebrides Islands and said, this is the churches are emptying. There are no kids in the churches. There, there isn't, we need to God to do something here. And so they decided Tuesday evenings, they would go and they would pray from 10 p.m. to three or four in the morning for their parish. And they called the elders and the churches to do the same. And revival sparked in that place and spread from there. Um, the churches were full and full of young people um, from the faithfulness of these two old ladies who couldn't even leave their home. And a young family in India seeking to um, reach the Bhujpuri um, region in India, which was kind of known as a missionary graveyard. And they worked uh, to raise up over 100,000 prayer partners and having people pray in every single time zone. This is before social media. So this was like phone calls, air mail, that kind of thing. Um, and every time zone at sunset had someone praying. So around the clock for this area. And once again, outpouring of the Holy Spirit, outpouring of God and a disciple making movement um, took off and spread throughout the region and God did mighty things there. So today we're talking about prayer and the importance of prayer. And um, so those are a few examples on like a large scale of how prayer precedes movements of God, but this happens in our individual lives as well. And so Daryl and Brianna are gonna actually share um, some experiences in their own life, lives now of how that, how they've experienced that. morning. I didn't know when we were going to be up. So, <laughs> um, so I think I shared part of the story with our Sunday school class at one point, but, um, I have a neighbor down the street who I didn't know, um, and was always somewhat intimidated to walk by her home and, and felt like God was telling me, you need to go like get to know this person. Like you don't know who's there. She's a, she's a young ish mom. Um, but you should, you should get to know her. Um, and he kept like bugging me about it. Um, and I kept not going. And then I just, I was like, well, maybe I just need to like pray about it. Maybe it's not the right time. Maybe I'll just pray for a while. <laughs> um, and so yeah, she was on my heart for a while and, and I had been praying for her. Um, and then one day there was an ambulance at her house and I was like, okay, God, fine. I'll go, you know, check on her, see, see what's going on. And her mom lived with them and she was sick and was going into the hospital. And, um, I had an opportunity to give them a meal. Um, but it was our first like connection and, um, her mom got better and came home and, um, yeah, but, but through all of that, I had the opportunity to pray with her too. Um, I, she came out and we were talking in, in front of her house and she just really needed some encouragement. And I had been being, I had been 
encouraged by Risa to be trying to pray with people. Um, and I had never really done it before. And she had just been like talking to me about it the other day. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to offer to pray with her. Um, and I did, and she was so receptive and, um, yeah, that's just like kind of started this relationship that we have now. Um, and I went, I actually talked to her the other day, yes, yesterday or the day before, um, and connected. She has three kids and connected with her kids a little bit. Every time I go over there to talk, we stand out at the porch and her kids all come out because they want to like see, see me or like talk, or I, I don't even know, but like, um, yeah, there's, there's something good happening in our relationship. And, um, I'm trying to look for ways to, to keep building that relationship. She's not, not a believer, but she has some spiritual has had some spiritual experiences in her life, um, that I think are a base for, for a belief in God. Um, and so I'm praying for that for her and, um, yeah, just, just a little way that prayer talking to God, like he, he has been preparing her and he has been preparing me and hopefully for something, something more, um, to come, but that's still in the works. So that's my story. <laughs> yeah. A few months ago, um, some of us were sharing, um, up here and I think I shared a little bit about, um, one of the things that through, yeah, the group that we've been meeting with was kind of pushing me to, I need to make work a place where, where God is welcome. Um, you know, I've done devotions at home and talking about God at home is, you know, kind of easy compared to talking about God at work. So months ago, I started doing daily devotions at work um, and prayer was part of that. Um, whether prayer was, I don't know, you have different different ideas on prayer is, you know, is prayer, you know, just talking with God or listening to God, or is it kind of thinking things through in yourself and maybe God kind of putting himself in there. Um, but I kept getting the thought of, um, I knew, I knew Ben was sharing with some coworkers and Brianna had, um, had talked to a friend who just started a Bible study at, at the school that she worked. And, um, and so through that prayer, I started thinking, well, I started not, I don't know, kind of not wanting to do it, but I kept praying every day. And the same thought kept coming, coming in my head. So, Hey, maybe, um, I needed to do something about it. <clears throat> um, and, um, yeah, so a few months ago, um, I started a Bible study at my, at my work. Um, and a few of you guys have maybe met Tim Perry, who's, who's come, he sat in the back corner a couple, couple, last couple of weeks. Um, and he used, um, yeah, a little bit of that answer, answer to prayer, um, that I've just, yeah, how, how do I, who do I talk to? How do I talk to them? What could this, what could this Bible study look like? Um, and the first time I mentioned it to him, it was just some day before, right before going home from work. Um, and I was like, oh, maybe I should mention it to him. Maybe I shouldn't, maybe what's going to happen. Maybe he'll look at me funny. It was literally, uh, he like walked in my office and said, you know what, Tim, I'm thinking about maybe starting Bible study. He's like, count me in. Like no questions asked, not when is this and what is it going to look like? How are you? Gonna, he's just like, count me in. I want to be part of it. Um, and so, yeah, I think there's prayer working on me and prayer working on him and prayer working on, um, yeah, just there were things were getting ready <laughs> as I was, as I was kind of allowing it to, or, or tuning myself into the things that were happening. Um, so we've met a bunch. It's been a small, a small Bible study. We'll call it that at work, but it's the beginnings of, of something different, I think. But, but yeah, it took, it took me sitting down and stopping and praying, allowing, allowing God to work through me. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like the story that Risa shared. There's a prayer and then like, you know, two hours later it's answered. Uh, it took some time, but it was, it was, it was a step in the progress. So turn it back to you guys. Thanks, 
Uh, proud parent here. <laughs> I did not draw this. Uh, you know, we've meant to bring some paper and some pencils or pens and then totally blanked on it. I don't know if anybody wants pencil and pen. You could also use your phone. They, you know, most people have a smartphone, drawing apps. You could even list. Uh, we're going to do a little activity, a little uh, drawing uh, activity here. Uh, if you have paper, if you want paper, I don't know if there's any in the back, pens or paper. We got some paper. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah. Use your bulletin, I guess. That's another option if you got a little bit of space in your bulletin. Um, yeah, so uh, what we're working on here is something uh, a number of you have seen before. And uh, we call this a prayer map or Oikos map. And uh, my son did this on his own without any, uh, yeah, any prodding or anything from me just a couple of weeks ago. He's like, where's that whiteboard? I want to, <laughs> and, he, and he drew this up. Um, I did. I showed you and, and you've since shown other people as well. You, you've shown others, your friends, how to do this too. That's right, loose the end. Um, yeah, so you can also open your Bibles to John 17. It was read, but we're working, we're working from there. Um, yeah, so I want you to write your name in the middle of the sheet. If you got a sheet, if you need a sheet, there's something coming around. Um, write your name in the middle. And uh, yeah, here in John verse 17, it says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. You know, we're joining, we're joining with Jesus in this prayer. This is um, his prayer, you know, to the father for himself. But we also get to join in with Jesus, his life for our life, he, his glory over us, we pray with him, glorify your son, your daughter, that your son and daughter may glorify you. Draw a circle around your name. Uh, put some lines going out. It's like this. Corn note, it's like the sun, you know, like the glory, let's say God's glory radiating out. Um, yeah. We must receive this glory in order to glorify God. I think this is key. Verse six says, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were your, yours, you gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. So coming out from the lines, I want you to write down some names. These are names that God has given you. People that are in your life um, these would be family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, people, I think in particular that you love, that God has given you to love. So write down some names, as many names as you like, many, as many names as you have lines going out even. Yeah, and we can think about um, I said oikos map. The word oikos is a Greek word meaning household. And, um, and for the Greeks in that time, household was uh, much more than just your nuclear family. This was, this was your extended family, your relatives, your uh, co-workers, your servants. Uh, you, you normally would have a business in your house. This was uh, a much bigger uh, set of people. Verse eight and nine say, for I, um, for I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. Again, this is a prayer map. We're, we're wanting to, to look at 
and consider who God has given us, in particular, um, yeah, given us to love. And so there's, uh, yeah, we're to do as Jesus did. He wants Jesus. It was, it, it, you know, it would be unthinkable for Jesus not to give the best to those he loved, right? He gave even himself. He gave the words that the father gave him. So we're, we're praying for all these things here. Words to give. We need to receive them, of course. Um, Okay, got some names down. Some people listed down. Um, you can even put a cross next to those those people that already know. They've already accepted. They've already got uh, Jesus in their lives. If you know those, some of those people, put a cross down next to their name. Um, Jesus' prayer continues, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Draw circles around those names also. We're praying for their protection. We're also praying for their unity. If there's some correlation between the names, maybe they're related, maybe they have, they're in this, you know, the, the names that you've written down, maybe there's already connections between people you can put you can even put lines in there, unifying. We want unity. Prayer for unity is so important. Jesus talks about unity over and over again in his prayer. Verse 18 and 19 say, as you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them, I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. Now put some lines going out from them. Put some lines going out from these names that you've written down. We're praying for, for their sanctification, for the glory of God to be upon them in their lives, for them to receive the word of God. Verse 20, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. And now I want you to consider people who these people know. So people that God has given you, people that these people know. And that can be groups of people even. Maybe they work in a school, maybe they... Uh, working to have, have a different job. Maybe they have, uh, they're part of a different family, groups of people even. Um, so I want us to believe with this faith that Jesus has, that even now, this is, of course, Jesus speaking before his death and resurrection, even now that these people that haven't, you know, the, the disciples haven't been going, have, have gone out, yes, but they haven't, they're not in this going out at this moment. He's praying that they, that, that people, for the people that will come to believe as a result of their message, so this vision that goes beyond just even our sphere, the people in our lives, we are praying for the next generation. Do we all have a map? Do we all have it written out? You can see Corin put his name in there and, and he put uh, the letters for the, uh, kind of got erased, but uh, for the people he knows he's writing uh, the best he can. And uh, yeah. Do we have, do we have this? Do we have our names down? Because now I'd like for us to do something that 
probably don't do very often in a service, but I'd like for us to, to gather together in smaller groups to pray. I want us to pray for ourselves, for the people around us God's given us, and for those who will come to believe as a result of their message. So let's do that. Let's uh, turn, show your maps to each other. Um, yeah. Not sure how much time we have. And as we're getting together, maybe I'll just pray here real quick for us. Um, anyone know how much time we have? Can I get the time? Four minutes? Okay. I'll pray quick. Lord, yeah, help us to, to gather together to pray. We ask, we ask, Lord, help us to love, truly love the people around us. Amen.